My mum is just the most beautiful person on the face of the earth. You know, I was born on my mum's birthday. And uh, so every time my birthday comes around, I just get this overwhelming warmth just engulfs my entire body. All of her life, she has tried to rehabilitate orphan animals like orphan joey kangaroos, koalas, wombats, snakes and rays, three kids of her own. We started off with a very small collection. We had a few snakes, we had a few lizards, and I think uh, it took us probably at that time a couple of years before we managed to get a couple of crocodiles. Stephen would have gone crocodile catching with us uh, extremely early in the piece, actually, when we were catching freshwater crocodiles. Uh, this would have been in the early 70s, and uh, the same thing applied, that uh, it was, although he was only a, you know, a fairly young lad, it was extremely difficult to keep him in the boat uh, so that you could keep your eye on him, because it, if we happened to see a croc, he, he would want to be the first one out to grab it. I think I was nine years old when I like, had my first jump on a freshie. And that was a pretty wild experience. You know, up the front of the boat, I've got the spotlight. And you can imagine, at nine years of age, I was keen as mustard. And I was accustomed to spotlighting the crocs, and I'd put the spotty down, he'd be driving, and he'd go in and jump them. But uh, something changed this night, and he had me up the front, and he's right, oh, son, you can get him. OK, up the front and don't worry about the trees, Stephen. We were going up the river and we saw this crocodile close to the bank. There's one, Dad, there's one! Keep your eye on it, son. And I trusted Stephen, Stephen that he knew what size crocodile it was, which was rather silly on my part. I That's should have known better. We're getting closer and closer until I can see his eyes right in front. Woo! Speared straight down, grabbing by the scruff of the neck. I was overwhelmed and I didn't realise how large it was. And then I realised that this croc is nearly the same size as Stephen. He's gradually going underwater with the crocodile. So I grabbed him and the croc and threw them both in the boat. Then I felt the strength of my dad's arm come underneath both of us and flip us both into the boat and he just pinned us down. You're all right, lad, you're all right. And sure enough, I was OK. And by crikey, that was the proudest moment of my entire life. I copped a little bit of flack at, at, at school, you know, at primary school, because I wasn't into uh, push bikes and then into motorbikes or skateboards. And so at lunchtime or morning tea, I'd be out there looking at the birds, trying to find little lizards and, you know, getting up close to them and feeding them grasshoppers. And I guess after a period of time, the other kids seemed, seemed to warm up to it and they got involved. Wildlife has always been my passion. It was my backyard. But surfing, I needed a sport and, you know, you can't quite keep fit enough chasing lizards around. So I took up surfing and that became quite a passion. And in fact, I was able to travel later in life uh, surfing and doing wildlife. So there was a good uh, mutual tie in there with my sport and my passion. In 1985, um, Dad and I, we felt that action speaks louder than words. And we've always loved our crocodiles and we felt that the conflict between crocodiles and man is something that we could help with. And so Dad joined up with the East Coast Crocodile Management Program and together away we went uh, trying to help the crocodiles by removing them from the area before there was that conflict or a potential danger of someone getting bitten. That was probably the most exciting time at the park, actually, because we'd, we had to catch what they classified then as nuisance or road crocodiles. And we were contracted to National Parks and Wildlife to catch these crocodiles. It was, in, it was an extremely exciting time. He seemed to have a reasonably good knack of not only finding the crocodiles, but also capturing them. I've found that the best way to catch a crocodile is to treat it as a one-on-one -on -one situation. So I focus. I just focus on that crocodile so hard that I am unaware of anything around me. I won't eat. I will just, I'll stay on that river because I feel so passionate about catching that croc 
before someone gets to him, I just won't stop. I've just got to do it. And of course, yeah. when I when it when that crop goes into the trap and I've trapped him, I'm elated. It's like, whew, uh, it's quite a, it's it's almost an adrenaline surge after the act of catching the crop because you know that you've secured the animal and uh, he's going to live a really happy life. I absolutely thrived on it. Living right in the bush, I became at one with nature. And I think those years of isolation in the bush, um, trying to help crocodiles, built Steve Irwin. And I had to uh, use bush tucker, and I'd resort to fishing to get a uh, to get a feed. So it really it really honed my bush skills. Uh, I can't recall how many crocodiles we would have caught over the years. Um... Oh, I suppose close to a hundred crocodiles, maybe, over those years. I spent what felt like a lifetime up in the wilderness catching crocodiles on my own, and occasionally I'd have family and friends helping me, which was great. Dad bought me this old national video recorder, which I'd jam in a tree on the mud bank, put it on the front of the boat, on the back of the truck, absolutely everywhere to capture a piece of history. My sister Mandy came up to give me a hand and she turned out to be an expert on the camera. Sharing all this with my dad and with my best mate Wes has helped to build me to be the person I am because it was crocodile conservation in its rawest form and to get it all on an old video camera is exceptional. It was very physical, hard work. Manipulating, grabbing, tossing these big crocodiles. And mostly I was on my own. And here we are back at the Queensland Reptile and Fauna Park with two crocodiles. Imagine how proud I was, how proud I am to share crocodile conservation with the people I love the most. My dad, my family, my Wes, my best mates. We were young, fit, keen, and innovative. I spent a long time in the bush and I'd caught a whole series of crocodiles. And with that came a big head and complacency. And of course, never the two shall meet. Catching crocs and complacency is just not on. And I can hear my dad's words in the background there. I'm gonna kick your bottom if you go complacent. Anyway, I got complacent. I think he'd been in the bush a bit too long because he got very complacent and um, he hadn't secured, the, although he got this crocodile back to camp ready to put into a crate, she was, she was still in the trap but she hadn't been secured, her mouth hadn't been secured. So while he's getting the transport crate ready, he let this croc out of the trap and she was just sitting there. So he goes in the box. As I'm backed out, whack! She put a series of real beaut holes in my feet all the way to the bone.